Uh, so we're going to jump right into blue here. Uh, first up for blue, we've got Air Marshal, one and a blue for a 2-1 human soldier creature. It has an activated ability of three mana. Target soldier gains flying until end of turn. Again, if uh, you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we're doing the full set review of the Brothers War. I probably should have mentioned this before getting into this card. Uh, this card. Um, we're going through all of the colors individually, starting from um, set number. So this is all going to be alphabetical. There's no rhyme or reason to the order of it. Uh, we've already done white. White looks great. It's doing white garbage. Um, it's going to be fine. Air Marshal. There's a lot of white-blue synergy in this set because Urza is white-blue. Um, so you're going to see a lot of soldiers in this color as well. Um, so again, Air Marshal is one and a blue for a 2-1 human soldier with pay three target soldier gains flying until end of turn. Which is interesting because this guy doesn't have flying even though there's clearly a set of wings on their back. Uh, so maybe they're just a little scared. They need that extra like pump up, you know? When you're like standing on the bridge and you've got the uh, thing tied around your ankles and you're walking out onto the plank and the guys need to like encourage you to jump but they're like there's a huge lineup of people who have all paid to jump off this bridge safely here's three mana go fly uh next up we've got curate heck yeah this is a great reprint a one and a white uh, for an instant surveil to look at the top cards of your library then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order then draw so you can either Put both on the top of your library and then put them in a specific order um, in order to draw the card you're looking for or the card you need or you can ditch them both and fill up your graveyard with specific things um, i know that if you're th playing like talarian terror or uh, the haughty Jin, you want to put those instants and sorceries into your graveyard um, and then you can draw random curate's great um, a great card from Strixhaven. Love that it's back. It's going to see a lot of play in the mono blue. Next up, we've got Defabricate, which is going to be my favorite card of this set. Defabricate is one and a blue for an instant. Choose one, either counter target artifact or enchantment spell. If a spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard, or you can counter target activated or triggered ability. Again, as someone who plays against the enchantment deck a lot, being able to counter target enchantment spell is going to be huge. And my favorite counter spell in the entire game is Dissipate, which, um, you know, you play a couple of copies of Dissipate into your deck, and Dissipate is one blue-blue counter-target spell. Exi if, a, if that spell is countered, then exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. This exiles um, the artifact or enchantment spell if you manage to counter it, and it's one cheaper. So, sure, you can't counter everything, uh, but there's a lot of enchantments that are worth countering. There's a lot of artifacts in this set that are worth countering, and... In the white green um, Selesnya enchantments deck, there's a ton of enchantments I would love to exile forever. So, this is going to be amazing. This is already my vote for um, the best card, my favorite card in this set. Next up, we've got Desynchronize. So, Teferi's having a little time glitch here. Four and a blue for an instant target non land. Permanence owner puts it on top or the bottom of their library scry to. So if they do manage to get something down that's a really big pain in the butt, um, you can pay five and force the play your opponent to either put it at the bottom if they don't want to replay it, or put it at the top if they'd like to redraw it and then play it again in the future. And you get to scry to. It's a decent card. Uh, there's better bounce spells, but this one's pretty good. Next up, we've got Drafna, founder of Latnam. Uh, this is our first legendary creature in blue. It's one and a blue for a 2-1 human artificer advisor legendary creature. It has one and a blue return target artifact you control to its owner's hand. 
This is going to be very powerful. Drapna is, I don't know if anyone here watches the loading ready run uh, streams, but the pre pre release that they did, Drapna wound up being very powerful. Um, you can also pay three tap Drapna to count, copy target artifact spell you control. So you can make tokens of any artifacts that you control power stones, giant creatures, what have you. Uh, Flavor Tech says, as lo alongside his wife, Herkel, Drafna built a legacy of scholarship that endured for millennia. And he's wearing a real fancy robe. He's got that scholar side part. Looks to be good. The 2-1, though, so dies to removal pretty easily. Uh, next up, we've got Falaji Archaeologist. Falag Falagi? Falagi. One and a blue for an O3 human scout creature. When Archaeologist enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a non-creature, non-land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Falaji Archaeologist so it becomes a 1-4. Um, this is pretty cool. There was something very similar in white. Um, so this seems to be a, maybe a theme. Maybe they're doing a full cycle of these, one for each color, but, uh, we'll find out. Next up, we've got Flow of Knowledge. Four and a blue for an instant. Draw a card for each island you control, then discard two. This is going to be awesome in those mono blue decks. It's going to be okay in the Demir, um, slash is it decks, um, or the Azorius decks even. Um, you know, you obviously want to have the most islands you can in order to cast this, get the most out of it, but it's going to be good either way. Next up, we've got Forging the Anchor. Two and a blue for a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of artifact cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this isn't choosing one artifact. You may reveal any number of artifact cards. So if you're playing artifact heavy uh, mono blue deck or something, you can look at the top five cards of your library. You may be able to even put five cards into your hand from there. You do have to reveal them so that your opponent's going to know what's coming, but uh, still very, very good. Next up, we've got Herkel, Master Wizard. Uh, wearing the same-ish robes as her husband, which is really cool. Matching couples, matching power couples are always the best. Uh, Herkel is one blue-blue for a 2-4 human wizard advisor legendary creature. At the beginning of your end step, if you've cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non-creature spells you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So that's a lot. So if you play a creature and then you play um, a sorcery after combat, an instant right before your end turn, an enchantment um, at some point, uh, you get to look at the top five cards of your library and then you get to put a sorcery, instant, or enchantment um from among them into your hand or you could put one of each from among them into your hand there's a lot to whiff on there's a lot of setup for this i don't think it's going to be that powerful but it's it's very cool it was on my short list of like cards to think about and look at next we've got Herkel's final meditation oh that's not good final is like the end Four blue, blue, blue for an instant. As long as it's not your turn, this spell costs three more to cast. So it could cost seven blue, blue, blue. So you want to cast this on your turn. Um, and it does return all non-land permanents to their owner's hand end the turn. So for 10 mana... You can return a person's entire board to their hand and then immediately end their turn so they can't do anything about it. That is that is huge, but it's very expensive. 
And you want to do it on your turn so that it's three cheaper, so it remains only seven mana. I feel like having one of these in your deck and sideboard maybe is uh, good. If you're playing against a soldier token deck where, you know, you play Final Meditation and all of their soldiers just go away forever, that's pretty, that's pretty decent, but it's still very expensive. I'd rather play uh, Path to Peril. Path of Peril. Involuntary Cooldown. Three and a blue for a sorcery. Tap up to two target artifacts and or creatures. Put two stun counters on each of them. So this is four mana, stun two things for three turns. That's not bad. Stall for time was very similar. Um, this is just mono blue stall for time. Keeper of the Cadence. Four and a blue for a two five human wizard creature. And it has an activated ability that says three mana put target artifact, instant or sorcery card from your graveyard onto the bottom of its owner's library from a graveyard okay so keeper of cadence gets to keep the cadence of the game and when someone playing white or black or green or all of these colors that have return cards from graveyard um when they go to target something that is in their graveyard you can put that card instead on the bottom of their library so that they cannot target it and bring it back that's pretty cool next up we've got koi koilos rock four and a blue for a three three creature bird with flash and flying uh when it enters the battlefield create a tapped power stone token look at this giant blue bird that is a giant blue bird look at the size of this ship in comparison that's like a Thopter or a, heli um, a heli jet thing. Next up, we've got Latnam Adept. Three and a blue for a 3-3 three, three human wizard. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Latnam Adept. So this is one of my favorite blue creatures ever. Uh, fairy Vandal. This is very expensive Fairy Vandal. Um, fairy Vandal is a... Well, two mana one one that does the same thing so this is four mana three three that does the same thing it's basically scaled up it's the exact same uh card at the end of the day except for you just start a little bit beefier it's not flying though so that uh is kind of a bummer but look at this cool hercule and uh daphna they really set the standard for wizarding fashion in uh cool cull i can't remember crawl whatever the town is next up we've got machine over matter look at little urza there just standing there ordering the machines around um machine over matter is one on a blue instant this spell costs one less to cast if you control an artifact so it could be just single blue uh, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So bounce spell. If you control an artifact, it's one blue. If you don't control an artifact, it's two mana and it's an instant. This is going to be uh, pretty good. Um, in standard, it's going to be really good in limited. The nice thing about this is that Fading Hope, which is our current favorite. Um, I say R as in like blue players. Hi, my name's uh, Wyatt, and I'm a blue player. Fading Hope is return target creature to its owner's hand, and most bounce spells specify creatures. This says um, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So we can bounce enchantments, we can bounce artifact uh, tokens, we can bounce uh, power stones, we can bounce weapons, art of anything. Anything that's not a land, we can bounce. Um, so this is going to fundamentally replace Fading Hope for a lot of us. You do miss out on the scry from Fading Hope, but I think the utility of being able to counteract uh, all of the really powerful enchantments, both in this set and the previous sets, the current standard is littered with enchantments right now, and this helps you 
uh, bounce those. Next up, we've got Mightstone's Animation. Three and a blue for an enchantment aura, enchant artifact. When Mightstone's when Might Stone's animation enters the battlefield, you may draw a card, or you draw a card. Enchanted Artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 4-4 in addition to its other types. So Urza, when Urza and Mishra started fighting, they were given these power stones. One of them is the Might Stone and one of them is the Weak Stone. Urza got the Might Stone, which lets him um, bring to life artifacts. Mishra got the weak stone, which, le which lets him control certain um, artifact creatures and um, superpowers. So the might stone animation turns an innocuous artifact that isn't a creature into a 4-4 creature, um, but it remains all of the other things. So that's going to be a big theme uh, in this set. Next up, we have one with the multiverse. Six blue blue for a mythic enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. Oh my god. Oh my god. Imagine if you had... um. What was that Hercules thing? Hercules final meditation. Now I can't find it, obviously. There it is. You can cast this spell for free. Instead of paying 10 mana. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. That is intense. That is worth a mythic and worth eight mana. Heavy investment, but boy, does that change the way the game is played as soon as you get it on the battlefield. Next up, we have Retrieval Agent. Look at him carrying his little book. Three and a blue for a two five human soldier. Uh, has an activated ability of two mana. Retrieval Asian gets plus one, minus one until end of turn. So it kind of has like fire breathing. Um, it is a two five. So you can safely do this like three times and it becomes a five two. It's not too bad. Next up you have Scatter Ray. One and a blue for an instant counter target artifact or creature spell unless its controller pays four. Oh. It's Essence Scatter... Um, but also for artifacts. So right now we play a lot with make disappear, which is counter target spell, unless it's controller pays two, it has a casualty of one. So you can duplicate the spell if you need to, but most of the time people hold it in their hand until the opponent is short mana. Um, this one would be, I think, would be really interesting if it was counter target spell, unless its controller pays four. As is, um, it's just essence scatter plus artifact countering. I'd rather play um, an essence scatter and uh, and just a normal. Um, counter non-creature spell why why can't i think of the name of this card i'm losing my mind i'm losing my mind why am i losing my mind um hello negate that's the name of the spell. Yikes. Wyatt, big yikes. Um, I'd rather have two negates, two essence scatters than play scatter ray, I think. It, it might come in. It's definitely going to be handy in um, limited. But as far as standard goes, it's not going to replace anything that we've currently got going. So...
Uh, next up, we've got Sky Strike Officer. Two and a blue for a 2-3 human soldier creature with flying. This guy's flying. Okay. Whenever Sky Strike Officer attacks, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. And you can tap three untapped soldier tokens, soldiers you control, to draw a card. Not too bad. Splitting the Power Stone. Oh, this art is so good. So... The power stone is what split into two, the weak and the power, and the might stone. Um, you can see Mishra's face on the weak stone and Urza's face on the power stone. Splitting the power stone is two and a blue for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact. Create two tapped power stone tokens. If the sacrifice artist artifact was legendary, draw a card. That's okay, I guess. Stern lesson. Two and a blue for an instant. Draw two cards, then discard a card. Create a tapped power stone token. So this is just going to like straight up um, replace like thirst for discovery. I think already like this is already better than thirst for discovery, which is a huge uh, thirst for knowledge, thirst for discovery. Those two cards get a lot of play in blue. Um, those ones are draw three, discard uh, basic land. This one is draw two, but you get a power stone token. Um, and you it doesn't specify what kind of card you have to discard, so you can discard anything. But you get the free mana out of it, which is really cool. Take flight, three and a blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus O oh, and has flying. And whenever this creature attacks, draw a card. Doesn't even have to do damage. Just when it attacks, you draw. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got Teferi Temporal P Pilgrim. Temporal Pilgrim. Three blue blue for a Teferi Planeswalker. It is mythic. It comes in with four loyalty. Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi. Uh, it's his zero ability is draw a card. So you get to draw a card and put a plus one on him. Minus two is create a two, two blue spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a one, one counter on this creature. So it's a fairy makes fairy vandals, which is he's to fairy vandals. And then minus 12 is target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to their hand. Then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control into their library. So at minus 12, they get to save one thing, put it into their hand, and then everything else goes back to their library and they have to shuffle it away. That is an insane combo. Or an insane ultimate, it's not a combo. But you can combo this deck because whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi. So on turn five, you play Teferi, plus zero, draw a card. It goes up to five. Then you play something like, oh, I don't know, Silver Scrutiny? Draw seven, maybe? All of a sudden, you're at 12, loyalty. And you can minus 12 the next turn. This is going to be really fun. Really fun to play with. Uh, next up, we've got Third Path Savant. Two and a blue for a 2-3 human wizard creature with an activated ability of seven mana, draw two cards. That's expensive, but, uh, you know, it is an un... Or it is an uncommon... Or a common, sorry. And if you've got Teferi down, pay seven, draw two cards. That's not that bad of a deal. Might be your only chance to draw cards. Maybe it saves Teferi from dying if someone's attacking it. Next up, we've got Thopter Mechanic. One and a blue for a 2-1 human artificer creature. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a 1-1 counter on Thopter Mechanic. Oh, this is also Fairy Vandal. Okay. When Thopter Mechanic dies, create a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. So it's Fairy Vandal that replaces itself, which is pretty good. 
Next up, we've got Urza Power Stone Prodigy. So this is Teenage Urza. Tons of angst in his face. Probably listening to um, Tool or maybe Prodigy. Two and a blue for a 1-3 human artificer legendary creature with Vigilance. They have an activated ability of pay one, tap Urza, draw a card, then discard a card. So you can filter. That's pretty good. Uh, whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, create a tap power stone token. This ability only triggers once each turn. So you get to rummage and you get to potentially create more mana for next turn. Next up, we've got Urza's command. These command cards, all of the art on the command cards is just mm, chef's choice. Look at this thing. Would you just look at this thing? Urza's command is two blue blue for an instant. Choose two. Creatures you don't control get minus two, minus zero until end of turn. Create a tapped power stone token. Create a tapped zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. Or scry one, then draw a card. That's pretty good. I love these instants um, where you get four options and you choose two. There was that one in white. Um, it's pretty cool. Urza's Rebuff. One blue blue for an instant. Choose one counter target spell or tap up to two creatures. See, I like counter magic that's like this. It's modular, so maybe they don't play... If I'm holding up rebuff mat mana, we get to their end step and they haven't played anything I want to counter, I don't feel terrible about tapping down two of their creatures if i can do that having options it's kind of like the prototype mechanic it's like i'm more likely to include and love a card if i can use it in multiple different scenarios and i think that you know the designers obviously feel that way too because there's a lot of modern magic cards that are good in multiple different scenarios for different reasons next up we've got weak stone subjugation one blue for an enchantment aura, enchant artifact, or creature. When weak stone subjugation enters the battlefield, you may pay three. If you do, tap enchanted permanent. Enchanted permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So this is bubble snare. Um, Tamio's completion, but you pay if it, if it's already tapped, you just pay one blue to enchant a creature. It can never untap again. Um, if it's not untapped, you can pay four total, three and a blue to tap something and enchant it so it never untaps again. It's a great, great little board control card. I like it. Next up, we've got Wing Commando, two and a blue for a 2-2 two -two human soldier creature with flying and prowess. Prowess is back. Wait till we get to the red. There's one particular prowess card that everyone loves and adores and is finally coming back. They're reprinting it in standard. Uh, Wing Commando, again, two and a blue for a 2-2 Human Soldier with Flying and Prowess. And Prowess, for those that aren't aware, means that whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So you're not building up counters, but you do get to buff um, your creatures till the end of turn by casting spells, which you were probably going to do any day anyway. Next up, we've got Zephyr Sentinel, and this, I saw this art, and I didn't read the card, but I saw this art, and this is the most badass looking wizard I think I've seen in a long time. It's like floating through the air, casting what looks like a shield, or maybe he's just like getting ready to cast something, but it looks shielded. He's obviously like floating, moving through the air. Um, they have Flash. There are two one human soldier, so they're not a wizard, which is interesting. Human soldier with flash and flying. When Zephyr Sentinel enters the battlefield, return up to one other target creature you control to its owner's hands. If it was a soldier, put a one one counter on Zephyr Sentinel. So he's a protector. You hold up uh, Sentinel mana. If something is going to die, you flash them in and return it to your hand. And it gets bigger if you manage to protect a soldier. Next up, we have Arcane Proxy. 
immediately put this into my blue spells deck on Moxfield. Love this card. I'm very excited to play it. There is a card from Aethervolt, I think, called Torrential Gear Hulk that basically does this exact same thing, and it was an absolute menace in mono blue decks, and they're kind of reprinting it here, not 100%, but sort of. Um, Arcane Proxy is seven colorless mana for a 4-3 artifact creature wizard. When Arcane Proxy enters the battlefield, if you cast it, Exile target instant or sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to Arcane Proxy's power from your graveyard. Copy that card. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So you have to you exile something. If you pay the full seven, um, you get to exile a sorcery or instant card with four mana or less from your graveyard, and you get to cast it for free. You do lose the copy in your graveyard forever, but it's very good. Um, and then it has a prototype version for one blue blue. You can make a 2-1 version of it, so it'll let you recast something that's two or less mana. Um, and the nice thing is, is that you can cast that copy whenever you want. This is not an this isn't a situation where it's copy that card, you may cast that copy without paying its mana cost until the end of turn. It's you know, you cast this card, you can make a copy of something, exile it from your graveyard, you have a copy that you can then cast at any point during the rest of the game for free. So if you just copy if you bounce their most powerful card, their shield rid or something. And then you play Arcane Proxy, copy a Make Disappear or a Dissipate. Then you just hold this Dissipate up, this imaginary Dissipate over their head that they can't do anything about because you don't have to have mana to cast it. They can't exile an exiled card or a copy because it doesn't technically exist in the game. It's pretty cool. I'm very excited for this. I've already added a full playset to my Moxfield deck. Um, I don't know how great it's going to work with the Haughty Jin Talarian Terror needing things to be in the graveyard, but I think if Torrential Gear Hulk was the masterpiece and fundamental player in previous control meta then arcane proxy is something very similar and is going to be a lot of fun to play next up we've got coastal bulwark so if you haven't seen mishra and urza make these crazy mechs they're all about robots they love robots um urza who is the blue white um character has these like very clean almost gothic like rounded edges, filigree, very professional looking mech designs, much like this coastal bulwark, who's like, it's got very clean edges. It's got nice gold filigree on it. It's got lots of roundedness to the body. It looks like a purposefully built mech. Mishra, on the other hand, who gave into um, the Phyrexians play for power, makes these grotesque kind of monstrous um, mechs. So usually you can tell which brother um, instigated or made the mech based on the way it's visually designed. So Coastal Bulwark is two mana for a 1-3 artifact creature wall with defender. Coastal Bulwark gets plus two, plus O oh, as long as you control an island. So it's a 3-3 three, three, as long as you have an island. And you can pay to tap it to surveil one and surveilling again is look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. So it's not scry where you put it at the bottom of your deck. It's graveyard, which in a deck, in a deck where you're playing arcane proxies, you're going to want to put stuff in your graveyard, especially because you can cast that said stuff for free. 
Uh, next up, we've got Combat Cur Courier. One mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature construct with two mana, sacrifice combat courier, draw a card, and it has unearth for a blue, which is why it's in the blue folder. Um, that's cool. You can basically draw two cards off of this one little guy. Next up, we've got Depth Charge Colossus. Again, with the Urza rounded, clean designs. This looks badass. It looks like it's going to fight some kaiju. Uh, for nine mana, you get a 9-9 nine, nine artifact creature dreadnought. This is a common, by the way. See that little color of the set symbol? This is a 9-9 nine, nine common dreadnought. Uh, Depth Charge Colossus doesn't untap during your next your untap step. Instead, you have to pay three mana to untap Depth Charge Colossus. So it's costly. It's almost got cumulative upkeep, basically. In order to untap it and actually use it, you have to pay three. Uh, but it does have a cheaper prototype version, which is six mana, four blue blue for a six six. And it does the same thing. Three mana to untap it, but you get a six six. Pretty cool. I think this is like a game. This is a game ender. For sure. Put hexproof on it. Can't be destroyed. Uh, hulking metamorph. Not. Oh, wow. This card's a little insane. And, and it's also like really hard to look at. I don't know if that's me or that's just the art that they have. Oh, it's just the art that they have in. Uh, in Scryfall right now. It's not very good. So Hulking Metamorph is nine colorless for a seven seven artifact creature shapeshifter. You may have Hulking Metamorph enter the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact creature in addition to its other types and its power and toughness are equal to Hulking Metamorph's power and toughness. So if you want to copy something, um, for an activated ability or for, uh, anything else if you want to copy a soldier so that you have more soldier triggers or anything like that hulking metamorph um, can come in as a copy of something it's 9 mana for a 7-7 seven, seven, which is a little nuts um, but you can duplicate something which is really cool this one has a bit more of a Mishra design than an Urza design but it is in blue, so I'm assuming it's still an Urza mech. Uh, it's a little crazy looking. All the juices flowing through it and stuff. The prototype version is two blue blue for a 3-3. Three, three. So it's four mana for a 3-3 three, three copy, something that's already on the board. That's probably going to be the mode that's played on the most. I don't know that I want or need a 7-7 seven, seven copy of anything. And it also can't copy legendaries because it doesn't have any clause in the um, rules text there that says that it is not legendary if you're copying something that's legendary. All it says is that no matter what, it's going to have hulking metamorphs power and toughness. Um, and if you copy something that's not an artifact, it becomes an artifact. So that's interesting. Next up, we have Spotter Thopter. Say that ten times fast. Spotter Thopter. Eight mana for a... F eight colorless for a four or five flying artifact creature Thopter. When Spotter Thopter enters the battlefield, scry X where X is its power. So eight mana for a four or five flyer scry four. That's not bad. It's also It's not very good. Um, you may also cast it as a prototype for three and a blue for a two, three flying Thopter scry two. See four mana, two, three scry two. Uh, that's actually pretty, that's pretty good. Eight mana, four, five. No. Four mana, two, three. That makes sense. It's four mana. I mean, it'd be great if it was a three, three or a three, four, but. That'd be really powerful. I would never pay the eight mana, I don't think. 
Unless I desperately needed to scry four. I feel like if to make the eight mana viable, it would have to be a six, seven flying scry six. Next up, we have Surge Engine, a mythic two colorless mana for an artifact creature construct. It's three, two power and toughness with defender. Again, it is mythic for a defender. We have a mythic defender. For one blue, Surge Engine loses defender and gains this creature can't be blocked. So you can attack with this and it can't be blocked. Great. For two and a blue, Surge Engine becomes blue and has base power and toughness 5-4. Activate only if Surge Engine doesn't have defender. Oh, so this is a growing, this is one of those growing things. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We saw um, that in black last set with the sleeper agent. This is the same thing. Um, so pay two mana, you get a 3-2 defender. Great. You then pay one blue, surge engine loses defender and gains this creature can't be blocked. You then pay three, two and a blue, surge engine becomes a blue creature and has base power and toughness 5-4. Activate only if you've done the first one. Then you pay four blue blue, so for six, draw three cards, activate only if Surge Engine is blue, and only once. So by the end of it, you've paid two, three, six, twelve mana, and you've got a five four construct that can't be blocked, and you've drawn three cards. That's pretty great. That is a mythic card right there that i see you surge engine i see you that's pretty cool uh next up we've got temporal anchor oh this is teferi's little time machine three blue blue this was in the trailer the cinematic trailer three blue 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 for a legendary artifact at the beginning of your upkeep scry two good i like it Whenever you choose to put one or more cards on the bottom of your library while scrying, exile that many cards from the bottom of your library. So you get, instead of putting them on the bottom, you exile them. During your turn, you may play cards exiled with temporal anchor. So then you just get access to all those cards when it's your turn. That's pretty busted. So now you want to scry the best stuff so that you get access to that on your turn. Crazy. Uh, our last blue card is Teresian Mindbreaker. Seven colorless for a 6-4 artifact creature Juggernaut. This guy looks like a chapel on legs with giant cannons. Whenever Teresian Mindbreaker attacks, defending player mills half their library rounded up. And you get to unearth it for one blue, blue, blue and attack with it right away. So they made, they made a milling juggernaut. Breaking minds left and right. That's really fun. Not going to lie. All right. And that is it for blue. Can we just take a second to uh, talk about and appreciate uh, Teferi, this planeswalker, a little bit? It's pretty amazing. I like it quite a lot i'm very excited there's so many um fairy vandals in this set in blue teferi even makes a fairy vandal which is great 